Operators, nor do they speak for drivers. Many of those drivers are, are uh, driving for companies that have uh, that are supporting this legislation. They don't speak for the Private Motor Truck Council of Canada that represents private fleets. They they don't even speak for all of the carriers. They don't even speak for all of their members in this situation. But the concerns of all those other people have been largely ignored for the last three years that we've been uh, fighting this. And we want the people of Ontario to listen. We want the people of Ontario and the politicians to, to look at the research, look at the reports, look at this issue and look, try to understand the negative consequences. And Jill brought up a very good point, and this, this, is, this is the crux of our argument too. We want those resources that government has to be put towards making the highway safer. And there's no one on the, on the roads that's more concerned with their safety than the drivers who are sharing their workplace with, uh, with people that are driving dangerously and who are speeding. And we want those laws on the books enforced. Uh, this, this is such a complex issue, it's, it's, uh, it's got so many things wrong with it. There's a safety, there's a trade and competitiveness, there's a certain enforcement issues with liability and privacy issues. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to Jim Park, who is uh, our Director of Technical Affairs, Technical Advisor in Regulatory Affairs, and he's going to speak to you just briefly about a couple of those issues. Thank you. issues that keeps getting buried in this discussion about speed limiters is the assumption that slowing trucks down is going to improve safety. The standard argument you get from the officials who brought this legislation to the table is that if the trucks are going slower, traffic is going to be safer. That's simply not the case. And studies have been done by Transport Canada, commissioned by Transport Canada, to analyze the impact of slowing down all the heavy trucks in a dense, fast-moving flow of traffic. And the traffic modeling studies that were done by the University of Waterloo came to some pretty startling conclusions. Those studies were made available to the minister and his staff back before debate began on this bill in April last year and they decided to ignore it. 
what was basically said was there are three scenarios. If you take a truck and a car and you put them together and you go down a highway where there's no other traffic, limiting the truck is going to improve safety. To draw a parallel to that, if you were driving somewhere between Kingston and Belleville, for example, where the traffic isn't really dense, put a speed limit on a truck, it will improve safety. You put that same truck and a whole bunch of other trucks like it on the QEW, the 401, the Don Valley, anywhere around the city of Toronto, all those trucks create turbulence within the traffic flow. And then cars start weaving and dodging around the trucks. And the, car, the trucks start to bunch up, one behind the other. And then they start blocking the right lane so the cars can't get on or off the highway. The traffic modeling study showed that. And they said conclusively that putting speed limiters on trucks in those kind of traffic situations is going to reduce safety. It's going to have a negative impact on safety. That was right in the report. Still, our minister ignored that. So he's put the business interests of the trucking community ahead of public safety as far as the owner-operators business association is concerned. And these men and women behind me, I think, would agree because they've seen that go on out there. But beyond the anecdotal evidence, beyond the stories these people can tell you, Transport Canada also commissioned some studies to be done on the impact of speed limiters in various places around the world where they already have them in place, like England, Sweden and Australia. Well, it's really interesting that having had speed limiters for all those years over in the UK, there hasn't been a single study that reveals an increased level of safety because of them. In fact, in the UK, they've quantified a real decrease in safety because of speed limiters for the reasons I said earlier. The slow trucks and fast traffic create turbulence, they disrupt the traffic flow, and the cars respond by weaving and dodging through the trucks. That creates a problem. Various studies that have been done in the U.S. show that areas where you have a differential speed limit, you have increased turbulence in traffic. What you're doing by limiting the truck speeds to 105 kilometers, when the rest of the traffic is doing 115 or 120 or more, is you have a differential speed limit. The sign still says 100 kilometers People are going to drive whatever speed they want to drive, and if the trucks are going slower, you're going to have turbulence. So all I want to say to you is, the reports are there, the studies are there, all the background's been done by Transport Canada, no less. Fairly respectable organization. And of all the research they did, they couldn't come up with anything that really quantified the safety benefits to speed limiters. Now the one point that Cam Woolley made earlier in his question about, since trucks have been doing this for decades, What's the difference? Why isn't it going to get any better if we add more speed limiters to the equation? Here's the difference. If 30 or 40 percent of the truck population is governed right now to whatever speed, 105 presumably, then the other trucks that are on the highway still have the capacity to pass those slower trucks. They can keep the flow of traffic moving. They can stay up with the flow of traffic with the cars. Safety is pretty reasonable. When you govern all the trucks, in the flow of traffic, going back to the Transport Canada traffic modeling study, that's when you have a problem. So at this stage of the game here in North America, particularly in Southern Ontario or anywhere in Ontario, where you have some trucks going a little bit faster than others, we can mitigate the problems created by speed limiters. The example in the UK where all the trucks are governed, the chaos at the side of the highway in the right lane, it speaks for itself. It's in the reports. Give it a read. Thanks.